Então, okay, great. Oh, there's Margaret. Okay. Um, I would like to start by congratulating Katie. I understand you had a packed house the other night, and it was a really wonderful program. And that's fantastic. I'm so excited. Was Janine there? Yes. With her um, Janine was stationing the the HRC table with Monica. Um, we had Amy there representing the EOGSA. Um, and lots of other great tables that were there and everybody found us. Um, so pride, pride will go on even in the rain. And the good news is that it did in fact rain. So we won against the weather. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's wonderful. Um, okay. The meeting is officially convened. The first thing is to approve the minutes. Would anybody like to, um, Amy would like to. I motion to approve the minutes. I'll minute. second it. Barbara second. Okay. Um, do we, Monica, do we need to say, take a specific roll call or you have everybody's name down? Um, I have everyone's name. I just can't see uh, Velda, so I would need everyone. Okay, Velda, are you there? She's muted. Yeah. She's muted. Okay. Do you all need to see me? I'm eating oh, right like, now. Just or, <laughs> or if you can just say you approve the minutes, then I'm happy. Okay. Approve the minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next thing I believe is member reports. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's have member reports. Who has things to say? Members, what have you been doing lately? I would like to highlight Amy's work with the GSA and having them come out and be a huge part of the flag raising ceremony as well. Um, and how wonderful that was to have youth really present and represented at that flag raising ceremony. Um, uh -oh. And the hope that we get to continue that in the future because I think it's really cool to get to see youth in that leadership position. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Katie. Um, the GS, we had also had another member of the GSA who then spoke at the Unitarian Universalist Church over by the middle school. Um, they, people there reached out to us. The congregation asked if we would come and do something for Pride Month. So we had one of our young people come and some of the members who couldn't attend wrote their own stories about what it's like to be an LGBTQIA2S plus um, person in the world today. And we had congregants read their um, stories out loud. And um, it, was, it was very powerful, very moving. Um, there, were, there were tears and there was uh, appropriately some funny laughter. So um, yeah, what, job well done. It's wonderful. Do you think there'd be any other churches that might be interested in having that as part of their Sunday service? Do you know? Not off the top of my mind, I don't know, but it's something we could think about, yes. We should think about that because the Congregational Church seems to be very active in that regard and that might be a good group to approach. That's wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, and I can anybody else do anything? Pride update, because um, the Congregational Church is super active there. Um, actually, they host the Mansfield week of the local PFLAG group that started this year. Um, that's being led by Lisa Day Lewis, who started it. She's um, moving away from the board. So if there's anybody who's interested in becoming a board member with the PFLAG Tall and Mansfield group, they are looking to recruit more board members um, to keep that involvement moving steadily along um, and to keep folks invested. And one of the things that is coming out of that group um, was really the desire for more youth-led programming. Um, so in conjunction with PFLAG and um, Favor CT, who's a group that we work with in a lot of um, collaborations and coalitions,
they this summer will be launching a group called Q Lounge, um, which is a youth-led LGBTQIA2F plus group that is going to kind of function as a like cool kids spot for our, our rainbow youth. So they're going to be less focused on the activism or just kind of like drop in, hang out. Um, it is going to be more geared towards the teen audience, but younger and more mature tweens are, um, you know, welcome to join. They are being funded by some grant work through Favor CT that we were able to help connect the, the P flag group to, to make that happen. Um, and for anybody who was at Pride, um, they did an amazing job running my very harebrained Freddie Mercury mustache competition. Um, <laughs> They, they they brought it together. They were they were amazing. They were exactly the right table to run it. Um, so I'm really excited about what that'll be for our community. They are going to get started um, anticipating over the summer. Um, and they were able to secure a place with the Rainbow Center on UConn campus to be able um, to host those groups, which is going to be nice. super cool um, to kind of build like that connection right from, um, you know, walkability, even from, you know, EO over to UConn and connect to that rainbow group and um, have that be a nice message of, hey, if you want to stay in town, like, you're you're still welcome, even if you like move over to the UConn side of things, we'll still like you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, other people, anybody else been up to anything? Uh, I had a, a meeting with um Maria and Ryan about the draft diversity and equity statement. And Monica and I have talked about that and I sent it to Monica. Monica, did you send that around to everybody? She did, I don't, I didn't see mine. Um, they, the town has a draft equity and diversity statement. And from what Monica and I could figure out, we're supposed to approve it and then send it on to them and ask them to have the town adopt it. So what they did was they took the uh, mission statement from the middle school and the elementary school. And I, all I did was to add a sentence to it so that it was referring to adults and not children. And other than that, we are recommending that they adopt the missions, the uh, equity statement that they have already written. And this is in line with that, um, excuse me, folks, I am having a really hard time in my own personal life and I can barely put two sentences together right now. Um, but anyway, we need to say that, yes, we approve this and then send it to Ryan and ask Ryan to have the town approve it so that we can begin uh, putting that into the paperwork for that gold status uh, thing. What's the name of that organization? Sustainable CT. Sustainable CT. And this document was part of what we needed to do to, um, to be eligible for sustainable CT. So we've got it. If you've seen it is, um, and we've got a quorum, can we vote on it or should we keep that to new business? Um, so that's, it's in old business. So we can, um, what I would do is I'd look at it, um, when we get there. Okay. Um, and I have not checked it against the, um, I sent it out with today's email, so I don't know if everyone's had a chance to really accurately review it, um, which would be with today's, with Sustainable CT's guidelines for the equity statement, so I haven't had the chance to really compare it. I don't know if everybody else has, um, so maybe what we do is we include it on next meeting's agenda as well. We can talk about it today, make sure that it's, you know, but that would be my suggestion. But if anybody else has any other suggestions. That's, I think that's a good idea because we, I, like I said, I'm not real focused and it looked fine to me. And the, the one sentence that I used to change it from children to adults was the only significant change that I had to offer. Um, um, I, I looked at a, the whatever you sent around on Monday, the equity statement draft, it looked fine to me. I read through it. Yeah, that's that's the one we're talking about. So yeah, is there any any major difference between that and what went around today? Just that uh, one. Yeah. Okay. Did did you get the chance, Barbara, to look at what Sustainable CT has? Um, there was a link that was sent in the email that I sent out today. No, I haven't looked at the email today, but I was looking at what I think Jane sent it around on Monday. Mm -hmm. The equity statement okay. draft. So I read through that, mm -hmm. but. Just so that it qualifies, it has to meet like whatever sustainable CTs 
standards are, and it very well could. I just, I haven't had the chance to look at that. So I don't know if anybody else had. Okay, well, if yeah. you could do that, and then we can put it back on the agenda for next meeting, that I would think, be good. Yeah, yeah I, think, I agree, Jane. I think that's wise. Yeah, I think we all probably should do that too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, and the other thing that when I was uh, talking to Ryan and um, Maria, we were talking about internal training for the Mansfield admin, you know, the people who work for the town and what kind of training he wants to do. And he is concerned because he said some people are going to be on board that we need to do all this equity training. And other people are going to say to him, I haven't got time for this. This is too much. This is one more thing. It's not a high priority for me. And so he wants to proceed in a way that will engage people and not alienate anybody. And I'm not sure it's totally possible to do that, but I understand his concern because we don't want to have an upheaval, but we do want to have constant gentle pressure to move along. So the one thing I suggested to him, I don't know if you been in town hall lately there's a picture of three old white guys it's a painting and it's over a bench and they're just sitting around talking and I said Ryan you know what you could really do to make people feel a little more welcome in town hall change the artwork <laughs> could you get a couple of afrocentric paintings up there take the old white guys down or put them someplace else and then you know kind of make the place look like a lot of different kinds of people live here and he seemed to think that that would be manageable I don't know how much time he's going to have to pay attention to it, so um, I'm going to keep on pushing. But that is the one thing I suggested. The other thing is he's still in process of thinking about who he's going to hire um, to do the assessment of hiring processes and policy. And uh, he's got two good possibilities, but he is going very slowly. And I think we just need to tell him this is what the town wants. This is what the town council asked for. And we know there's going to be resistance, but we're going to keep on moving on anyhow. And then just see how far we get, because um, there is no question in my mind that everybody in that there are what are these two black people who work for the town and that's it. Everybody else is white. Um, it's not a lot of people and we need to change what the town uh, employees look like and the town management and everything else. So anyway, that's what I did over the last couple of weeks. Katie, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, if Ryan is looking for ways to roll that out, um, you know, if he is looking at ways to stagger the training and even um, potentially considering how do we make this department to department so that it is focused specifically on department needs because, you know, DEI with youth services is going to look different than DEI with, you know, the Department of Public Works, but it's important for everybody to have it. Um, but if he can find an organization that's willing to tailor the different um, you know, modules to, you know, be potentially spread out throughout the year. Maybe it's quarterly small bits of training rather than one big training where you're taking everybody away from, you know, all together all at once, but being able to find a way to make it applicable so that it's not anybody able to say, oh, this is one more thing and it doesn't matter to me. It's this is one more thing. Here's why it matters specifically to me in my role and how I serve the community and getting that buy-in and getting that investment um, because it is important for every single person who works for the town of Mansfield to understand the diversity of the town of Mansfield and how to practice cultural humility, how to practice cultural curiosity, how to practice, you know, taking on a non-judgmental stance when you don't understand everything that's going around and to like not step in it because it's real easy to step in it. And like, that's a headline that the town of Mansfield doesn't need. Like the town of Mansfield doesn't need like, oh, department head says like this ridiculous thing or, you know, you know, worker X, Y, Z says this ridiculous thing. Like we are coming off of some rough press specifically related to um, our past experiences with a former town manager who's no longer with the organization. And like, we've seen those headlines we don't need those headlines anymore. Like the, the schools have done a ton of work, like the work is happening. Um, and it is important for all of us to follow suit. Um, Thank you very much. I will write him a little note and summarize what you just said and keep on pushing because it needs, it needs to be done. And I understand his concern. And I also haven't got a lot of sympathy for the resistance. But perhaps I'm not the best person because I don't have any sympathy at all. And uh, we need somebody with sympathy. Okay, anybody else uh, doing anything else? Janine has done something. And when she finally gets on her computer, we'll find out what it is. Um, 
All right. Last thing we finally do, thanks to Margaret, have this year's um, Juneteenth poster. And I picked up some from Margaret today and I put them in the um, community center and the social services center, the human services center and Starbucks and Margaret's put some things in some other places. And it occurred to me um, that putting them in the banks would be good. And my my pitch line for please hang this up is this is a government holiday and we would really appreciate it if you would inform everybody about what the source of this government holiday is. And so I will be doing that. But if anybody wants a couple more posters and you have a place to hang them, um, please pick them up from Margaret or uh, Monica. And then take Actually, them I think you you have all of them at this point. Okay. I only I only had the one that was hanging in my office. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't grab a couple because I, I meant to take them to the schools. I was at the elementary school today and the I'll be at the middle school tomorrow. So those are a couple of other spots that I'm sorry I didn't grab another half a dozen before um, you spirited them away. So you know what, Margaret, I thought about going to the schools, but the schools are about to close. They How are, but but there's going to be a lot of traffic there um, at the middle school. Friday night is their graduation. Tomorrow night is their class night um, or their promotion ceremony. So, um, you know, it, it's, it wouldn't hurt to hang one up um, and, you know, and things continue there. So. Okay. Well, um, Unfortunately, I have lots of doctor's appointments tomorrow, but I will try to get you back a couple so maybe we can get some up or I can just take them to the middle school myself. And the library also would be a great spot yep. to have one or two there. Yep. Okay, I can do that, but it's not going to be till Friday. Got but it. I can do that. Okay, anybody else got any other little useful things you've done in the last month? to advance the cause of human rights. Okay, moving right along, um, old business. First thing about an old business is update from affordable housing. And if you haven't seen today's Willamette Chronicle, there is a front page article on um, a conference that was just held in the last day or so at Eastern, and they had all kinds of important people talking about affordable housing and what they're gonna do about it. I haven't had a chance to um, read the whole article. So we're, we are generically pushing toward affordable housing. We are not specifically pushing anything for seniors. But the thing that I liked about the article that I read was that it said affordable housing is a racial issue and everybody needs to face that. And I thought, well, good for you. Uh, you can't pretend that affordable housing is just about finding places for anybody. It has to do with race and who wants to live where and who people want in their community. And so that is in the article and it's in the conversation. And I'm going to try to find out more about it. But as far as I can tell, Mansfield doesn't seem to have picked up the conversation in any way. And I don't know, Margaret, if you know any more about than that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not that closely plugged in to the Affordable Housing Committee. I mean, that's staffed by the folks in the planning department. And I've been so, you know, out straight with ribbon cuttings and other things that I, in pride flag raisings, I'm, I haven't really tuned into them. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, you were just my best bet, that's all. Um, well, I'm going to follow up with it. Uh, maybe I, I've been looking for an excuse to go visit Elsa Nunez, so maybe this is the opportunity because we don't seem to be paying any attention to this issue as far as I am aware. And I think this is another one we need to keep putting on the agenda and making sure that people are talking about it because there's a desperate lack of affordable housing in this town as well. Um, I, I do know one thing in, and that is that um, the mayor and Ryan, I know are speaking with the president of the University of Connecticut and the housing stock and the amount of housing stock and the fact that you know there's a lot of housing stock in Mansfield that is um, rented by graduate students from the university so there is conversation um, with the town gown committee and I suspect it will go forward with this conversation next week it's just what is our cooperative effort with the university to be responsible for making sure that there's affordable housing and housing that is affordable for all of our citizens, both our 
our university, temporary university friends who are here, but also for our own residents. So there is a lot of conversation going on on that front, I know. Um, so it's, I think that there's work being done, but I just know that that's, uh, that's part of the issue right now. I'm gonna so, just bring up one more time, and I know I've brought this up before. When I talked to Mary Flood at the Senior Center, she said that was the number one issue facing, facing seniors in town was affordable housing. So yeah, when I met with, with the Commission on Aging, they said the same thing. Yeah. And I said to Mary, how come these people aren't making more noise? I told them they had to start doing political organizing if they wanted to get their issue up front. And she said people that age, especially if they're depression survivors, don't. Mm -hmm. so she said, when I first started working in senior centers and most of the people were depression survivors, they were just glad if you gave them a piece of bread. They didn't ask for anything. So these people, they are willing to come to a small group meeting and say something to somebody else who should stand up for them, but they are not willing to stand up for themselves at this point. So um, I've been to town council once. I've talked about this at the town council once. I don't know if that's an effective approach or not, but I'm willing to do it again. And I think we need to get some other stuff, conversation going on because it is a huge issue here. And they convinced me. There's, there's only one subsidized housing complex in town. And then there are three that are privately funded and the prices are going up and people are moving out of them and there are vacancies in them. So that's what I know. Um, okay, but it's it's very complicated and it doesn't move quickly. All right, what what is the next item on the agenda under um, old business? Is it community conversations? Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, this is my big one for today and I just, I need help with this. I have ideas for three community conversations for next fall and I really wanna run them, um, but I cannot do this myself. I need like a little subcommittee. And um, Janine says she wants to work on it. And I hope uh, Ray will work on it. And I wanna do three programs. And the first one, Amy, is your uh, discourse one that I need to know how that would work and how would we bring it up, present it, market it. Then the second one is gonna be a little um, storytelling, multicultural storytelling thing that I wanna do in the library, maybe in October. And then in November, I really wanna do that panel about what do all the, the major faiths have in common and how are they different? And I think doing that right before the Christmas holiday season is a good time. So Barbara, I'm gonna need your help to find some Muslims who are willing to speak in public. Um, I have no doubt yeah. I can find I'm them. happy to do that. But I know you know people who are Muslims and they, it does not have to be an imam. It just has to be a well-informed person. Yeah. Okay, okay. I can, uh, once we have a date nailed down and a place, I can try to line some people up. Okay, so um, Amy, why don't you tell us what you think your first, um, program would be if we were going to have an open program about the future. Is it the future of EO or is it just the future? It was about um, the what makes the town, is the town livable? I can actually oh, drop well, it. Yeah. What, how, are yeah. you, how do you want to present that to the community? So um, let me, I'm going to look for the link quick. We had something that we've started to work on. So let me see if I can find the link to our presentation draft. Um, but we can do that. We can do that at EO Smith. We will have a panel of, um, the way we'll do it is we'll have a couple, of, we'll have a different, we'll have a list of questions. There will be breakout rooms. Conversations will take place in each breakout room. Ideally, if everything goes as we hope to, there will be a specialist in each room participating and listening to the conversations. And then afterward, that that specialist will be part of a panel and will come together as a community and be able to bring up and share what was discussed in each individual room where notes are taken and also ask questions of the panelists. Um, so I know that the students were looking at sustainability in terms of, right, energy, green energy, um, are we recycling? Um, are we building structures like the new middle school, which have, you know, zero to no impact on, 
the environment. I know they were looking at um, resources. Do Are there resources available for seniors, for people who are uh, disabled? Um, and then I don't remember what the other one was. If I can find it, I will happily put that link in. But the kids made some good progress. And then um, we just kept getting postponed with dates. So we'll be working on that over the summer too, which would be lovely because maybe I can even have the kids join us one evening. Maybe they can come in. Um, I can see if they're around for July, but maybe August, we can have them come to our meeting and, and, and float some things by everybody. Let me see if I can find that. Well, so it, well, you can continue while I look for this to see if I can find that link. Okay, because um, what I'd like to do is to set this up as a series. And the first one will be collaborating with the uh, discussion discourse thing. Right. And the second one will be HRC and the storyteller. And the third one will be just HRC. My hope is that what comes out of the first one will give us subjects to talk about mm -hmm. the next three months. So right now, what we need to do, how early in the year do you think that you can manage to have that happen? We're hoping to do it in September or October, early October. Yeah, if you could do it in September, that would be good. Our and goal I, is to try to have it with Celebrate Mansfield. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. we're hoping, but I don't know. It depends. We've got some stuff to do. <laughs> right, that's good. I think the second one is going to be very easy because I met this lady and I've got her card on my, oh, it's right here, um, who was a storyteller. And she does multicultural storytelling and her program is to tell a couple of stories from different parts of the world. Her name is Carolyn Stearns. The name may sound familiar to you. And what she does is she still tells a couple of stories um, from different parts of the world. And then she brings everybody into the conversation about those stories and asks people to tell their family stories and where they come from. So the PR on this is going to be important because we want people to know that we are soliciting participation from people from all over the place, not just, you know, people that were born and grew up here. So that that I want to do sometime, so middle to late October, and then do the, uh, the uh, third panel sometime in um, early to mid-December. And I think that will be plenty. If we can do, if we can pull that off, that will be wonderful. So what do we need? We need places, we need dates, and we need, what you're thinking about, should we do this remotely or should we do this in person? I think the library one with the storytelling has to be in person. Yeah. Uh, Amy, yours has to be in person. Right. So the only question is the last panel. And I think I'm preferring pers in person as well. I, I would say unless another huge wave of something goes through, we should try to do it in person, especially yeah. if we have a big enough venue so that people don't feel cramped in or crowded. Right. But the library uh, auditorium is pretty big. Yeah, it is. Um, so we could use that. But I had a conversation in the locker room the other day with a lady who said, you know, this community center doesn't do a whole lot to build community. Everybody just comes here and works out and goes home. So then it occurred to me that maybe we ought to try to do something else in the community center, but they don't really have a big room except for the gym. Yeah. So maybe we should try the library. And the library people are wonderful. So let me, okay. So we need dates, venues. We're, if we do it in person, then the last thing we need is to figure out a way to thematically present it and then um, start talking about publicity, Margaret. And we need to do that sometime July, August. Okay. All right. I might I also suggest to think about, um, so the new Mansfield Elementary School is also designed for, um, to have community spaces. So oh, really? if you're looking for a place, well, they have this, the great hall um, and the gym, of course, uh, but that's another um, thought. And then Leonard Hall, of course, which is a wonderful part of our community center. Um, has the performance space and and we've had several we've had several local government academy sessions there uh, the ag um, the agriculture committee hosted its agricultural forum there um, and that's a, a nice space for not a huge number of people um, you know that feels you know relatively cozy the community room at the community center unfortunately I mean unfortunately it's fortunately it's it's used a lot even in the evenings. So that may be 
um, you know, one of the, but there is a community room there besides the gymnasium. Again, unless you, you know, and we can check on the capacity of these rooms, but. That, that community room is not very big. I've been in there and that gets crowded real quick. What is Leonard Hall? I haven't heard of that before. So it's, it's uh, the Community School for the Arts. Um, it's at the end of 275 at 32. And the Lenards uh, financed for the town to make it over into practice room, teaching room facilities for music and art. And then there's a, a lovely performance space, um, practice space there as well. Okay. Another spot that you could um, reach out to, especially if you are looking to engage the seniors, is the senior center. There is um, the, the large dining room um, and that can be partitioned into smaller rooms as well there's audio visual um, and if you are looking to include food that is also set up to be able um, to accommodate that need a lot easier than um, maybe somewhere like Leonard Hall would be because um, they do have a full service commercial kitchen so um, you could reach out to Sarah Taylor and see if they're looking for any catering jobs um, or if they're just able to host um, and you know, also reach out to Allison Maynard, our new human services director. Um, but I know we hosted at the senior center a few of the other local government academies set up as well. Um, so that's often often food helps to get people to places. Um, <laughs> I think the the family night at MES at you know a couple of weeks ago, they had pizza and like everyone was just thrilled to to go have a few pieces of pizza and see the new building. So. Um, <laughs> incorporating food into that might get you well, a little bit more conversation right yeah. we'll have food at our event definitely um and the other thing jane i was thinking if you're feeling um if these go well and if you're feeling um ambitious and want to try to continue the community building um the narrative four program that my students are also trained in is a really fantastic way to bring people together uh we did try to do something with the senior center. They were supposed to come to EO though, and they know showed us. Um, but we could do something about, um, and again, depending on what we wanted it to be, it could be um, something on identity. We could do something on, um, we can sh we can shape the theme in a way, in whatever way we want. So the idea though would be that perhaps Velda and I would sit down and we would talk about the first time um, we felt accepted into a community and what that was like. And so I would share my story, Belda would share her story with me. And then when we came back to a larger circle, Velda tells my story in the first person and I share Velda's story. So I would say, hi, my name is Velda Alfred Abney and I'm going to share my story. Um, and it's a, it's when, when um, people are open and, and interested in the idea, it's a very beautiful way to one, affirm that other people's stories and beings are important and heard and seen. And then also, and it doesn't work this way for everybody, but frequently, hopefully I will come away feeling, you know, touched or moved by Velda's story, whether it be a celebratory story or something that maybe is more poignant my telling that story and wanting to do justice for it, by it, doing honoring Velda's story um, is also a great way to make you think or make the individual stop and think a little bit about what that's like. So um, the yeah. students are trained to do that as well. And we've done it successfully at school a few times. Um, we've been wanting to hold a community event and just haven't had, well, we did one, we did do one, it was virtual and it was very successful. Um, but it's a, it's a really moving, um, it's a very moving way to bring in that I, the identity and storytelling piece. Um, you know, what was it like for you growing up in your faith as opposed to me growing up in the place that I was in and sharing those stories and bonding, you know, and, and um, I've participated in five exchanges. One was international. I was paired with a 14 year old boy from Mexico. It was pretty interesting. Um, but I think that for me, the most powerful one, one is I was paired with somebody from um, West Virginia and grew up in Appalachia. Her parent, her family was were minors. And um, I'm, I will admit this, per, but like all the all of my all of my things about mining and mining families, as soon as I saw who popped up on the screen and we had the most 
Like I, I took so much away from that conversation. I still carry it with me. It was, it was amazing. It was so powerful. So um, again, if we, if it looks like these are working well and we want something else that's going to bring people together and, and um, you know, we can reach out to different communities and say, please come. I think that could be a really exciting way to do something in the spring. And I was going to say, let's put that in the spring. You know that I love that kind of stuff, but I want to talk to you a little bit more about the technicalities of it. I would love to see, that's what I had in mind when we first started, when I first started thinking about that. I would love to see us do that. And I did go to that one program that you ran that was at EO um, and I participated in it and it was very powerful. So I would, okay, so we'll put that one on the agenda for spring. Hi, Janine. Uh, yes, Janine, it's nice to see you here. I'm glad you got here. What do you have to tell everybody? We're talking about community conversations, but what have you been up to? A um, couple of different things like I normally am. Uh, one uh, is uh, I had already told Jane about this and um, there were three fourth grade students who uh, had an idea to take one of the vacated um, playground and turn it into a dog park. And I was nice. really excited about that idea. And I'm like, you know me, I got to roll with this. And it, to me, it seems like it would be a great opportunity for uh, uh, open communication with, with the community. So I wrote a letter to the town council and I actually got a response from the mayor um, the other day saying the wheels of government move slowly since we haven't decided what will happen to the school sites. We can't establish anything permanent there. However, at last night's council meeting, strong support was given to including a dog park in the ongoing mm -hmm. facilities plan and the parks and recreation planning process. Let's hope your kids will be able to take their pets there someday. So. You know, it's it's right, the process. Right. We need to have more people writing. Um, I did um, the first training today with the Sustainable Connecticut. Um, what was it? Uh, their little acronym is Be Ready, uppercase B, and then lowercase E, and then R E A D I, and it stands for Belong. Belonging, racial equity, access, diversity, and inclusion. Um, I'm I was already thinking about, hmm, we can utilize this information for community conversations. You know, like how to do the conversations. Um, they had some activities. The one activity was really it's kind of interesting. They had us each put down three ingredients that we were going to go to the store and get to make for dinner. And then they put us into breakout rooms and we had to combine all of our different ingredients <laughs> to make meals. And it was kind of interesting to kind of like, you know, I'm like, you know, is it gonna be, and you had to be open about it. You know, you, you couldn't add anything. It was just what you had. I'm like, I love that idea. They were also um, encouraging about asking the kids what do they see your community as in the future? You know, so it's a really great program. Like I have lots of different notes, I have ideas, um, uh, you know, and, and my thought was uh, continual learning of equity and understanding um, so we can practice this every day and this will lead to open communications. I mean, like I started jotting down thoughts and it was just, I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to, uh, July's thing. Um, and that living room conversation, um, the next thing, they didn't put what the topic is, but it's supposed to start June 22nd. And unfortunately, I will be in California. Um, but I'm going to keep looking at that. Um, that program looked really fun. It's just getting together with people. Um, and they have a topic and then you start talking about it. And you, you know, it's, it's, open, you can't be judgmental, you know, it's that sort of thing. And then they also have a little training thing that if you wanted to be a host, I'm like, well, okay, <laughs> let's, let's figure out how to do this first. And then I wouldn't mind, you know, maybe even hosting living room conversation, which would also be good for community conversations. 
You know what? I think we have plenty of ideas now to get us through next year. So it's simply a matter of getting off the dime, organizing, getting the speakers and publicizing. I did not ask for a budget for this year, but Ryan has a $15,000 budget for diversity and he is getting access to a lot of um, free support. So I, the, the storyteller lady charges $300 for her program. We might need a little money to buy food for some of these things, but I think we can get some money without having to um, have a separate budget because we are part of the diversity education program and uh, see how far we can get with it. But uh, what you're talking about is exactly what I was hoping we would do. So if everybody's into it, put your thoughts together. I'm going to pick a, pick three dates randomly, check them out with Margaret, see if they work. And then we're going to start, Amy, you're in charge of the first one. Um, and we'll see about the, the storyteller for the second one. And then uh, uh, Barbara and I will work on the third one. And then we will move further along um, into the spring. If we if these things catch on, we can keep on keeping people talking to each other. And that's really what we need to be doing. So I'm real excited about this. This is, this is very good. I am pleased. Okay, next. What's next on the agenda? Is there a third thing under all business? Equity statement. Okay, well, we already discussed that. So, yes. okay. Now, I can't get the, the agenda up on my screen here again. It's new business. Okay, that's it. So, um, I see. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to share with the group? I just, um, I did put in the chat um, that there is an opportunity on July 11th, um, there will be a, a major community input session as the next stage um, of both the parks and recs master planning about the kind of community we all want to build from a parks and recreation perspective. But there is also a facilities discussion. There's this facilities master plan that Jane just um, mentioned that is beginning to to get input for and what kinds of needs do we have in the whole, um, you know, the is our community livable um, that the D&D group has been, you know, studying. Um, I think that input from them and to have them also here part of this community conversation would be wonderful. So I would really encourage everybody to kind of tune in to some of that engagement opportunity this summer if you're in the area. And they'll be doing it beyond just the in-person. There will be, you know, online survey and they're going to be showing up at events around town and, and really trying to get some input from folks. So a lot of this effort, I think, uh, converges. And then the other thing I just want to mention, you were talking about food. Um, the Taste of Mansfield initiative, which is, of course, um, several departments within town, but the Stores Farmers Market's part of it, Yukon Extension is part of it. Um, but we had a get together yesterday. And, and of course, what the Taste of Mansfield is all about is, is connecting the community through food and through local food. And so I do think that as we talk about some of these um, gatherings, that there might be even a Taste of Mansfield uh, kind of a component to it and maybe, you know, by honoring the different international cuisines and, you know, we had tried to start a, a cookbook, you know, getting people to sort of send in their, um, their family's favorite recipes and begin to, you know, so think about the food piece because we actually have an, an initiative that thinks about that and worries about that as well. Um, and then, um, Lastly, I just would really like suggest that we get Celebrate Mansfield on our agenda for the next meeting because the 30th of September um, and, and how its timing ties into these initiatives, the, the, the three you know, discussions, the community conversations. I think last year we brought a really um, great idea to the Celebrate Mansfield, right, by having the um, the photo exhibit that we were able to showcase and we got front page, you know, story about the fact that we were doing that. So I think if, if we want to kind of think big um, and whether there is anything that we want to add to the Celebrate Mansfield programming agenda, um, 
you know, I know that they're probably pretty far down their planning path at this point, but if there's something from a, a cultural, you know, a dance performances, you know, if there's something that we would like to provide input to the Celebrate Mansfield committee on, or something that we want to do special at our table, um, it would be nice to be really deliberate about that um, and intentional and, and start to really get that figured out in July. Um, Margaret, have we heard anything from the NAACP about wanting to come to this again? Uh, no, I mean, not, not, they haven't reached out to that I've seen. Okay. I will reach out to them. Yes, okay. we should make our reservation soon, just so that the Celebrate Mansfield Committee knows that we're planning to table there and, you know, what we have in mind for it. Okay. Sure. Thank you, everybody. Is there more? Oh, Barbara's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Barbara's on an uh, August, uh, okay, all right. Well, I hope you are well by that time and everything works out okay. They doctor told me I would be. But said, you're not doing the surgery if I can't take that trip, so. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, I'm going to follow up with individuals as I can. I think I have everybody's um, email contact because my house is uh, in a totally unpredictable state right now. And I really can't count on anything happening the way I expect it to happen. So as I uh, can get to it, I'm going to be in touch with people about who's going to do what and how are we going to do this and that so that I feel like we have a plan and we're proceeding. But um, I'm very ex excited about all these ideas that you've come up with. And I think we can probably get on a roll next year and get people to start talking to each other about who they are and what it's like to live here and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you very much. I really appreciate all the thought that's gone into this. Um, I, I, I just have one question. Do the suggestion boxes go out? Have they been placed? Uh, no, but they were laminated today and are ready to go out. So Sharon okay. and I will take responsibility for taking those out to the world. Um, so it's got the QR code. It's got the um, and the ability for someone to just, you know, scrawl and drop. So because Great. it also now carries input from the town as well as HRC, we'll take care of getting that physically out but we did put them out um at the pride festival they were on the table um uh monica took one to the hrc table at the pride fest on friday and we had one at the open house celebration for mansfield elementary school we were giving mm -hmm. tours to the community on saturday and we had it as part of our town um exhibit there so we've, we've started to use them but they're not out in all the facilities but they will be next week, I think. Victory, Barbara, it only took a year, but that's wonderful, it did happen. And they're very nice and they're very sturdy. So now that we've got them, we've got them. Okay, other comments, thoughts? Thank you all. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? I'll make that motion. Barbara, second. Velda, you moved your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, Velda, second. Thank you very much, and I will see you next month from either here or the coast of Maine. All right, take care, everybody. Take care. Bye.